It's time for Everything Noob, your source for all things gaming. Episode, get ready, 69 of the Everything Noob <laughs> podcast. Keeping it fresh. Keeping it. Yeah. The most edgy show on the internet, except not at all. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes we get a little frisky. Yeah, I think yeah. this number will suit us just fine. <laughs> How is everyone this evening? Good. Vortex. I'm good. Jemmy, Dreadlow. So, I guess we have to talk about it because you can't, you're smiling ear to ear. Oh, because <laughs> I was just traded a shiny Pokemon. <laughs> and oh, it was wow. it's so adorable. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I'm actually really happy that I'm no longer the only one on the show with a 3DS. I know. Now, now we can pass on the only... 3DS person, or the only person without a 3DS, uh, to Dreadlow, he gets that, he gets to feel the like I've been feeling The shame of not feeling. being in the club. Yes. I, I, now I need one. <laughs> <laughs> well, now is the time to buy it, because Nintendo, for the entire month of March, is offering this really cool deal that I thought was pretty, I, I thought it was a pretty good deal. I mean, you still got to spend some money, but if you buy a 3DS and you register it, in the month of March, you get a free copy of Pokemon X or Y, provided that you buy one of their like listed games. There's like five or six or seven or something like that. Animal Most of them Crossing are like, on there? Yes. Yep. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd I buy that one. one. That's the one, one I picked. If you're not an Animal Crossing fan, though, Mario Kart 7 was on there as well. I, would, I couldn't recommend that Donkey game Donkey Kong. More. Donkey Kong. Um, I, they had a Super Mario Brothers game. I could look up the list. Yeah. It's we're going to link this deal in the show notes on the Nintendo like website so you can see it's uh you know legitimate. It's a thing. And now we have someone here who's actually taken advantage of it and you could tell us it's not going to it's not oh, going to yeah, like, yeah. you know <laughs> screw you If over you're anyway. actually considering and like going to soon purchase a 3DS, do take advantage of this deal. I mean, there's just no reason not to. You get a free game out of it. Oh yeah. Well, the only downside, and for someone like Dreadlow who's looking to save a couple bucks, I saved a bunch of money on mine. Uh, if you buy used and the DS is already registered, then you kind of miss out. So you yeah. Oh, yeah, to, yeah. to you know to take full advantage, you might want to buy a new. Is it two DS as well? Offering yes, use? it's a two DS, a three DS, or a three DS XL. Okay, and you got the XL. Yeah, I got the black XL. Good, good man. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay. Huh? No, I'm not going there. Uh-huh? I'm making the jokes about <laughs> large and black. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Her 3DS no. XL is. All right, is we're black. living up to that number 69. It's, it's 69. We have to. We have to be edgy. <laughs> That's the rules of the internet. <laughs> if you're in a 69 anything on the internet, you got to be really edgy with it. And <laughs> yeah, that's the rules. <laughs> I don't think that's But no, thing. it really does work. You don't have to pay a subscription fee to anything like that. You just have to re- make an account on Club Nintendo, which costs you nothing but uh, like 20 minutes to fill out the surveys, which is basically just asking questions about your purchase of the hardware you just bought. I, wonder... I may just... I wonder how many used 3DSs aren't registered because I don't know if mine is. I didn't really try. Um, I don't know. What if you? I would imagine a lot. So if you try to register it right now, you could get a free game, but you already got it. <laughs> See, yeah, I have the Pokemon Y version, and uh, I thought about getting, you know, okay, well I could get Pokemon X if I really wanted to, and then I'm like, well. I download this thing, and now I'm taking up more space on my memory card than I need to. Because I already have Pokemon Y. There's no need to play through X. I can't... I If, if I'm not mistaken, I, there's nothing I can do to trade between them if they're both on my th- on the same <laughs> console. Pokemon Box or the Pokemon Bank. Well, the Pokemon Bank is a monthly fee. That it, No, it's not a monthly fee. It's a yearly fee oh, okay. of $5. Oh, okay. That's not bad then. I thought it was a monthly fee, five dollars. No, nope. that's why I kind it's of blew it off. Five dollars for a year. I still don't need that though because I don't have any other Pokemon games I want to trade between, and I don't really want to trade. But I don't want to get rebeat the game. I just beat the game. I want to play a different game now, and I'll play. Yeah. I'll play this when you know I want to 
trade or battle with a friend or something but that's the you know that's how you play pokemon you never stop <laughs> but yeah it's uh there's something i wanted to ask you how did you feel about the the friend code thing i've always been indifferent about their their nintendo security for kids it works but i wish that was like an option i wish that it was it was easy like microsoft for example that with xbox live you just kind of add someone and then it's like so and so added you yes or no with Nintendo, um, you both have to add each other and like communicate on that level. How do you feel I about that? I kind of like that uh, because somebody can't just add you and then troll you or stalk you or anything like that. Like you have to actively add them back for them to have access to you. Yeah, it is inconvenient and lame in sort of a way, but it's better than way back on the original Wii. Uh, because now, like when you're directly in a game with somebody, you can just add them straight from there. And they can add you straight from oh, there. Yeah, yeah, I saw I saw that feature in Animal Crossing if you're, if because you're in a game with someone new. Before, I don't even think like you could even play online games unless they were registered on your friend code system. So, like, Does, they've loosened up a little bit, but it's still pretty, like, hand-holdy. When you do the friend code system, it's the same code all the time, right? So it's basically like, yeah. a, like, a, like a username or something. Yeah, but it's... it's it's a long, digited yeah, username that uh, no one can remember. 12 digits or something like that. And wow. Three it, blocks of four. Yeah, yeah. So huh. it it's, it's not a bad system. And I think for kids, it's especially helpful. But when you're an adult, there's so many parental controls on the 3DS because kids play it. And there's, like, for example, the 3DS with the 3D option, you can turn that off in the parental controls I found out because, you know, kids with uh, developing eyes and stuff, it's not it's not even good for adults to be looking at the 3D that long, uh, it much less a child. It makes me sick. Yeah, it, isn't it kind of cool? You see it, though, right? I mean, it's it's pretty cool. It's a little novelty. I turned it on just for the demo when they were doing it. I was looking at it, I'm like, okay, that's cool. It's, like, a little depthy, but, like, this is making me nauseous. Go away now. Have you tried it in <laughs> Animal Crossing at all? I I think I flicked it on during Pokemon just for giggles and then turned it immediately off again. Pokemon wasn't very satisfying because it only comes on during battles and uh, cutscenes and stuff. Yeah. But in Animal Crossing, it's it looks really nice. You can't look at it long. Same with Mario Kart. It looks nice. It kind of pops out. Uh, the, it really In Animal Crossing, it brings out the textures of the leaves and the animals and stuff a lot, which I thought was kind of cool. But you hmm. can't really, like, you're not missing anything if you get the 2DS and uh, <laughs> decide you don't need to hurt your eyes. It's not something I can see people using very long at all. But I'm just saying, if that's an option, why not have the friend code thing be like, okay, instead of because I found it annoying already with trying to add some new people uh, just over the weekend. I have to like get in touch with them and go, hey, uh, do you want to trade friend codes to get this going? Instead of just like, okay, I'll add you. And then they'll it'll pop up on their screen. Vortec added you. Do you want to accept or not? You know. I'll yeah. tell you what I find annoying is um, I'm used to playing on the Xbox. So that auto connects you straight to the network for everything. Yeah. And like with this, like, it, they want you to have that wireless on, like, at all times, but you are never actually connected to the internet during a game unless you actively, like, go to the dialogue and turn it on. And yeah. as soon as it possibly can, it'll turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, if I really want to just play with my friends, please just leave it on if I, like, turn it on. Or let me control it in the settings where it just auto-connects to the net. I, yeah, I wish uh, Animal Crossing is a great example of that because there are times when I turn on the game and my, uh, I'm turning it on specifically because a friend wants to come visit my town. My house is all the way at the bottom of the map and the guy who runs the gate in the town is all the way at the top of the map. So between running from my house to him, I'm going to inevitably run into something I have to do. Maybe there's uh, some flowers I have to water. Maybe there's some a hole I have to dig and get a <laughs> fossil. Now I have this fossil. I'm like, well, I might as well get all the other fossils and go to the museum. And then I forget to open the damn gate. And when you get there, he asks you like a million questions. And the difference between that and Pokemon is you just hit the internet button. It's like, you want to go online? Yes or no? Yes. Done. That's it. That's all it should really like. I feel like the the gate thing. It's a cute little. It's a cute little way of getting it opened, but I'd rather just like hit a button, open it, and then walk around town and do what I need to do while my friend gets in there. There are little things well, like huh? that. Like with Nintendo, they love their their security, 
and they, yeah, they love ripping you off the internet as fast as they can. It's not I can't even connect right now. My my Wi Fi is all screwed up. I got to fix that now. <laughs> but oh, yeah, wow. I want people just to stop by in my town. Like I wish I could choose just to leave it open constantly while I'm like playing. Yeah. Otherwise, you have to actively open it, and then when it's opened. They, they, this was really bad in the Wii version. It's gotten better in this version, but when your gate was opened, you really couldn't do anything just because the gate was opened. Now it seems you can't do anything. You can do everything up until I think there's a couple little things you can't do, but for the most part, you can do anything in the game you could do in single player mode up until someone walks in your town. That's when you can't move around furniture and things like that. I don't know why that's a thing, but you can't get bees if somebody's <laughs> yeah, you visiting. Can't- yeah, if someone comes in the town, you can't get bees because you could harass each other with them, I guess. But <laughs> you can't die in the game, so I don't understand why they took that out. It's oh, like... you know what it might have been? It might have been because catching bees in that game is really challenging. It might have been to, you know, make sure it stays challenging. If if one friend shakes the bee tree and the bees run at the other friend, and, you know, it could be something like that. I don't know. Yeah, but that co- requires coordination from another player. So, like, you should reward people for getting creative like that. I always found it annoying, and I don't know if this is still the thing. In the in the Wii version, it was a thing where I couldn't... If, let's say, I had all the fossils already, and you just opened your town up, and you're like, I don't have any fossils. I can't bring the fossils and put them in the museum myself. You would have to do that. So I'd have to drop the fossils on the ground for you to p- put them in the museum. And then it labels who contributed those fossils. And I always thought, why why not have an out of town guest contribute those fossils, and then they get a little credit in the town? That's kind of cool. Why is you know I don't I haven't tried it with the 3ds version, but in the Wii version yeah. you couldn't. Uh, no one could uh, put anything in your museum except the people who had actual saves in your uh, in your game. So yeah, what would be the purpose of labeling then? Yeah, I guess it makes sense because nobody really shares their 3ds. Like that's a personal system. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some people who do, but like for the most part, no, you're not sharing it with anyone. You, you want to know how bad it was uh, back when I was a kid and we first discovered Animal Crossing, my sister and I? Mm-hmm. I? I had a GameCube. I got this game not really knowing what it was, and it was the most addictive thing ever, and she saw me playing it. She wanted to play. I'm like, okay, so I gave her a house in my town, and the fighting, the constant fighting to like share the system was so unbearable that my my parents ended up going out and buying a second GameCube and a second copy of the game <laughs> so she could play it cuz that's how addictive that game is and then you don't wow. want people like cuz you start projects like chopping down trees and making little farms and stuff you don't want other people screwing that up so right 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 yeah so, oh my god and now with the with the DS version why even have it an option to have other people make houses cuz no just everyone gets their own DS it's nice to have it there, though. I mean, I guess there are... It, it would suck to not have it. You know, better to have it not use it at all than not have it and then need it. Right. Yeah, but, I agree. Uh, anyway, I just thought, yeah, cool deal. 3DS going on right now. Go check that out. It'll be in the show notes uh, linked in there. Uh, just, I may have to buy a 2DS because, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I There's mean, nothing wrong with it. It's a smaller screen. That's the only thing. But um, it's the screen's the same size as like the regular 3DS, though, right? Right. Right. You were wanting the the XL, is what it oh, was. Oh yeah, yeah. If they have a 2DS XL, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be they really, probably will roll one really out. Big, <laughs> I don't doubt that they're gonna roll one out. The 2DS oh, yeah, is already pretty hefty, so I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they may just change the like the design of it, but it's a 2DS that's XL. Yeah. I bet they will. Well, there's enough uh, dead space on the 2DS, I, I feel like, to where they can make the screens bigger now without even increasing the size of the unit. I Is it really, really seen dead one... space, though? I don't know. I haven't or does seen it feel one like dead space because in person. of... On purpose. Well, no, be- because like there could be wires and stuff and like the chipboard and stuff back there. So what may feel like dead space really isn't. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't I haven't gone up close to one. I've just well, seen they... pictures of like all this area around the screen that's just not being utilized. So yeah. So maybe make the unit like a, a you know ten percent bigger to you know have the screen. But yeah. Um. Anyway, that threw me off. Sorry, my computer's making sounds. <laughs> the 3DS um, sells, or the XL 3DS sells well enough. Like, I don't know anybody who gets the regular size if they don't have to. So, I'm 
certain that we'll see an XL 2DS eventually when sales start to slouch. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I, I don't want them to get too far ahead in the in the handheld game. I'm so happy with the 3DS. I don't want to see another new handheld console anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that's right. what I don't I'm afraid think of. they plan on it because the 2DS is still pretty new. So I think that's them just saying, look, we're going to support this for like probably a couple more years at least. Yeah. Well, moving on though, uh, something speaking, speaking of handheld things, this was kind of cool and uh, you might want to check this out. It's going to be linked on everything noob.com in the show notes. As always, there's someone who invented a business card with the Tetris game built into it. And it looks like yeah, that they were going to have the option to add other games. Like they'll have little that's what it looked like to me. Like there was chips that you can put in it. Yeah. I don't. I don't know who really wanted this. <laughs> I couldn't take anybody seriously that handed me a business card that had a game in it. Unless you're it's a. Cool. I mean, I'd be like, "You are so gimmicky and cheesy. Please, just give me a regular card." What if you you work for a gaming company? Nope. Sorry. No, I can't <laughs> take you seriously. It doesn't Let's... matter. We got the thing is the thing is we we got our phones you know and and we can put Tetris on there that's one thing. <laughs> Have you seen the um 3D pop up business cards? I haven't. Oh my god! It's like this guy does a whole like YouTube video demo of the 3D like uh pop up business cards and like he is so into it oh, and yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, like, all other business cards are apparently inferior, and I guess now he probably has a complex, because now we have video games and business cards. Um, (laughs) Why do you need that? I don't need all that business on a business card. Like, I just want your number and address. I don't need all your business. And what you do. You got your business all over this card. I know. Why do you have your business all up in my card that you're giving me? (laughs) I, I wouldn't part with them. I think that it's probably kind of expensive <laughs> to produce these. I well, think, yeah, that's oh, another yeah. thing. Like, I'm sure it's like ten cents at most for a business card, and like that has got to be a couple of dollars a pop. We're gonna. Besides, we're gonna get to a point with phones where I, I already, you know, I'm sure this is already possible, but no one's really done it yet. Where there's gonna be an app where you can exchange things like business cards and stuff, but it won't be a paper exchange. You just use Bluetooth or something to quickly link up. Here's my card. Boop. And isn't there like friend bump or something for the iPhone where like you can exchange uh, contact information by just like bumping your phones together I, if I you both have the app installed? Other phones do it. iPhone's always been behind the curve with with uh, cool little things like that. Unless there's an app that uses yeah, the Bluetooth it's an app. and detects the uh, other phone. I know that there's some Android phones that have literal bump features where you can exchange photos and contact in- info by literally touching the phones together. iPhone doesn't really have that unless, again, an app utilizes the Bluetooth and kind of tricks you into thinking it, you know. It well, yeah, that's, that's what it is. I, that's It was an app that uses, like, the Bluetooth or something like that. And, like, uh, bumping it, like, uh, activated the accelerometer, which activated the, the Bluetooth to push it to the well, parent here, phone. Well, here's a thought, too. <laughs> this is just a thought. You can have an image of your business card on your phone and you just text it to them. <laughs> True. Yeah. But then they have your personal number though or your a direct line to you and your work number and some people might not like that. Yeah, that's true. But still, I, I mean, we're, we're we're being really hard on business cards right now. I think this is an <laughs> incredible feat to put an entire video game inside a paper thin card. I, I don't think it's paper thin, but it's thin. It's really thin. And it has Tetris in it, and I think that's. I imagine cool. that's very frustrating to play on how small the screen is. <laughs> I bet it is. Like, because I was looking at the, the the image of it and stuff like that, and I'm just like, I think I would just throw that thing. I think I mean, Tetris is already hard enough. It's, I it's love like Tetris. The screen is literally the size of your thumbnail, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's got a, a, it seems you know. a little bit bigger than that. Okay, your whole thumb. Well, <laughs> maybe Dredlo has a really big thumb. No, I. Oh, you might be so. right. I'd say it's about one and a half thumbnails. That was to be <laughs> the official measurement there. One yeah. and a half. Oh man! And there's and videos. it's widescreen too, HD. 
<laughs> no, <I'm scared. laughs> no, no, that's like old school, like, uh... It's 10p. It's 10p. No, it's 2p. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> there, there's videos of this, though. You can check it out on the website once again, and you can kind of see for yourself exactly how big what it is. It and... <laughs> Ardu Boy? I, Ardu I... Boy. Don't know why he's I calling think it, it that. It says right on the front. Ardu, yeah, because that's why. That's why I think that maybe they'll eventually have other games you can you can like plop into it. It seems kind of backwards now that I'm staring at this, and it, it looks like a a tiny Game Boy with terrible graphics. It seems like it's kind of moving backwards from where we're at right now. But that's what technology do, does sometimes. Do you think <laughs> that um, the game is just kind of a ploy to get the business card in your hand, so you're thinking about them more often? I would remember someone who handed me a Tetris game. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, oh yeah. Do you think it's just a way to make yourself more memorable? Yeah, yeah. From a marketing standpoint, it's a great idea. Even if you hate hate that this card, you have this now, and it's like oh, I don't want to play Tetris all the time. And now this card's running running on some kind of battery, and you know you're still gonna remember that guy, <laughs> and you're gonna yeah. appreciate the effort that went into obtaining such an expensive, stupid card. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you'll do business. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it'll, you'll remember not to call that creep who handed you the Tetris game. Don't know. Uh, what a poser. <laughs> what a poser. Okay, well, let's talk about a real game then. I guess you can call it a real game. Tonight, South Park Stick of Truth comes out. At, oh, at yeah. Eastern. Oh, we talked about this, what was it, last week or the week before? About the price and how we don't know much about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. How it's uh, over, over, very overpriced. Well, yeah, we don't know how long it's going to be. It, do it looks, we know it's really overpriced, though? Because it's not out yet. I don't know. That's what's driving me nuts. It looks so fun because it's a turn-based RPG with South Park humor. And every trailer, every clip I've seen for it has made me laugh in some way. It's like they, it's like because I've been watching the show. I've been a longtime fan of South Park. I watched the show. And the writing has just been... It's been so bad. I mean... Uh, the the more the, the more recent episodes have been pretty good, but episodes just before the last few I saw, uh, it, it's been bad. Uh, they just got lazy to me. I haven't laughed at it very hmm. much. I feel like they've taken all their writing and focused it on this video game the last few years, and that might explain why the show's kind of sucked. Because every little <laughs> clip I've seen has made me laugh. It it looks like they they've you know balls to the wall with uh, the South Park humor. Well, they did a lot less like ridiculous kids being kids episodes and more like political and focus more on the parents it seems like recently too. Yeah, yeah. It, it really, it's become one of those things where uh, I don't know, I, the show's been very disappointing but now I see this game and the, the trailers are hilarious. I don't know much about it yet though. I, I've I know there's more info about it than uh, they're letting on, but it's not. I, there's been no reviews of it that I've seen that have really captured my interest. What I do know, it's a turn-based RPG featuring South Park characters. You you play the new kid in town. What's the rating? Oh, I'm probably it's probably 17. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is it mature or is it teen? I'd say I would it, it would have to be mature, just given yeah. South Park. Okay. And yeah, I don't think they good. You know. I, I'm glad they didn't sell out to pander to everyone. Oh yeah, no, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be nearly as good. But all those episodes, if if any South Park fans are out there, if you've been watching, they've been making fun of the Game of Thrones and a few other things as well, and and PlayStation and Xbox, and they did a whole trilogy about Black Friday, uh, with a Game of Thrones twist. And it looks like a lot of that was also to promote the South Park video game because the characters in the game are dressed up like they were in that in that episode. <laughs> so oh, wow. it, there's going to be a lot of references to other games and shows and just a lot of pop culture and stuff. It it looks like a hell of a lot of fun. It looks like it would be a great game to stream and like laugh at with you know with your viewers and and uh, I I just think I think the the one thing for me. That would make me determine if sixty dollars is worth it or not. Is the length? Yeah. Yeah. If, it, well, if it's by a the long end of game, the week, just Google search like the average playtime of that game, uh, and you'll because you could find like the average playtime for games. So like at the end of the week, because it'll be out for a week, then just do that, and you'll know. If I it's mean, worth is it, it is it story driven or is this? Uh... If it's an RPG, I hope it's story driven. <laughs> 
Define so I story. Just... I mean, we're talking about South Park here. <laughs> uh, yeah. There is probably okay, some loose plot because, like, <laughs> no offense to RPGs, but the you know the combat's not really gripping. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're talking turn based. So I mean, you killed Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be similar to that, where you know you select moves, so you have that combat system. I don't know. And then the classes are like same as any RPG, mage, warrior, Jew, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally yeah. what they said. Those are their words. I thought that the made me laugh. <laughs> stereotypical Jew class. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. You know, they. I think they did a great job on it from, just from what I've seen of it so far. And I'm very – I might have to watch some, some streams or Let's Plays of it. To decide, yeah, me too. Spend the money. I I want to know. I'll check it out. And I'll have to know the, the average play time because sixty dollars. That's I mean triple A price for South Park. That's all I kind of. That's how I feel. I'm, so I'm it, not surprised by that price tag though. I guess I'm not. They, they have the the clout for that. Yeah, price tag. exactly. We'll see. I, yeah, we'll see. I I was tempted to. Uh, to like I said, tonight, I, but. I think a lot of people have their hands in the pot because it's such a successful show. You've got producers, you've got... Well, who was the know. company that like made the game for them? Uh, I'm sure that's somewhere. I didn't really... I didn't Hold really on, I'll... The publisher. But you, know, you know the television production companies, all those people are going to want a piece of the pie. Yeah. You're right. So, you know, we talked about that last time, too, and kind of, okay, well, $60 seems fair in that sense. Again, I, I get my only determination. Okay, oh, there you go. So, yeah, my only determination will be the length of the game. Looking forward to that, though. And if if I find that the average play time is super long and there's a lot of stuff to do in it, then I might just drop some money on it. <laughs> I'll be playing uh, Bravely Default for my RPG. Playing what? Bravely Default. What's that? It's a JRPG released by Square Enix like early this month. Like I think it was February fourth for the three DS. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's like one of their classics. Because I was looking at it and I didn't even realize who made it. And I was watching the trailers and trying to see if there was any other three DS games, because I knew I was getting one, uh, that I was interested in. And I'm like, look at watching this and I'm like, oh, this is like an old school JRPG Final Fantasy. <laughs> And I was like, who made this? It's a little, like, a lawsuit ready. It's like Square Enix. So I'm like, oh, it's like old school. I need this. <laughs> What's it called again? Just so I can write it down. Bravely Default. Brave. Worst name ever. But I agree. the name is based off the battle system. Instead of just, because there's the brave option and the default option. And, like, you build points and spend points for extra damage or you earn points by defaulting which is a defense mode uh, to do da extra damage later or uh, extra rounds of actions during your turn. But it's still a turn based uh, RPG. Huh. So now that you got this 3DS XL you're just like hunt on the hunt for good games. Well no because I knew <laughs> I was getting one and I'm like well I, if I just have two games for it for the duration of its lifetime like that was a waste. <laughs> well, I mean, it's okay I like now the... that I've stepped into three game territory. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's got other. Uh, what I like about the 3DS is it's got all those other features like uh, the Wi-Fi connecting to Netflix and stuff like that. I have so many things to connect to Netflix. Like <laughs> I, know. I don't even care anymore. It's like Remember? it connects to Netflix. <laughs> what <it> doesn't? Remember when they had Netflix a special my business a card whore. connects to Netflix? My business you had to get a special to box. You had to actually get a special box to connect to Netflix for your TV when it for, when Netflix first came out. Oh, now TV is just embedded with it. Yeah, it's just like embedded with it now. Yeah, that's that's, that's funny because you you see stuff like that the the technology with TVs like the the smart box that connects to your TV and how fast that became obsolete. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If 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 technology moved like it did back in the you know in the eighties and nineties, that would be a huge deal right now. <laughs> oh yeah. That, oh yeah. But it just came and went like bam done. I just think it's kind of funny. Hulu Plus, Netflix, YouTube. Uh, what doesn't <laughs> connect to those? Yeah. Still, it, it, I thought it was pretty cool having a Nintendo system. 
after not having an, a handheld Nintendo since the, I guess, the original DS. Which you was know what? Very boring for me. If I was 12, it would, like, elate me. But I'm not 12. Yeah. I, I have, like, a computer. Uh, I have a tablet and stuff like that. So it's like, eh, that feature's just meh for me. <laughs> when I was a kid and I was playing the Game Boy uh, Color and whatever I had, I always thought, man, what a pain in the ass it is to... And I, even as a kid, I knew that it it was going to change. Like link cables and all that stuff to just to get connected with friends and trade Pokemon and things like that. And then the internet was getting bigger and bigger. And then I'm still getting Game Boys that have no light in the freaking screen. Like they were always <laughs> 10 steps behind everyone else. They're like, well, you can attach this flashlight to it. Oh my God, this is awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, the glare. What? Yeah. And then the Game Boy Advanced SP comes out, has a light in the screen. But by that time I'm like, well, I already, I just bought the Game Boy Advanced you know, without the stupid light in the screen, whatever. I'll just play it during the daytime <laughs> under <laughs> under fluorescent light and deal That's with it. Funny. And and then when when the DS came out, the PSP also came out. And the PSP yeah. like trumped the DS twofold. It was crazy. Because it, it had, you know, color screen and it's huge and it was uh it, it I guess late did later it had the web browser? Are I you talking about had, the game gear? No, I'm talking about the PSP. Versus the DS, because they came out around the same time. Yeah. It was just a better system all around. And that's why I'm so shocked at the 3DS, how it's finally Nintendo gets it. Like, they're 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 right there with us now. Yeah. I, but That's why I was so, like, blown away. But the PSP did awfully. Like, they just made enough to I don't, con- I don't consider doing it, a Vita. I don't remember it like that. I remember being in high school and people were getting, were getting PSPs left and right. I know one person that, like, bought a PSP and actually used it. Like, I've known a lot of people who ran out and did get it, but they're like, eh, the games suck. I'm just going to get out my Nintendo DS. I may, I don't know. Later, I I saw that. Maybe I just hung hung out with the right nerds who who got one, and, you know, we found a couple (laughs) of good games for it. There wasn't, they really didn't try to make good games for that system. I agree. That was the the big fault of that system is there just wasn't any good games. When you look over at the party all the DS guys are having with these cutesy little fun, like, low graphic games. (laughs) It's like, but it's so fun. And then they have Pokemon, so. Yeah. I, I think I was disappointed in, later I was disappointed in the PSP. After, you know, after uh, the first maybe six or so months it was out, everyone had one. We all played them like crazy and then never touched it again. In fact, my PSP is probably the nicest looking used PSP out there uh, because of how, (laughs) like, not a single hairline scratch on it, how nice I kept it. (laughs) Even back when I was playing it a lot, I made sure it stayed really nice. Well, they started to actually, they made movie discs discs for those, for the PSP. I mean, that's how how far that thing went. I mean, they were making movies. Yeah, I have Office Space in my PSP. Yeah, that's yeah, the only is, was... that's the only copy of Office Space I own, actually. They were expensive. Yeah, they're as much. That's as all a, I really like remember about DVD. them. They were way too expensive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, I don't know. I was just I, I really like the the 3DS. I think they did a good job. A lot more than I thought I would like it. We're right, we're right back to 3DS now. Damn it! <laughs> You're obsessed, man. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Let's talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about the the Pokemon news that everyone wants to hear about. Twitch plays Pokemon. We have to we have to talk they about did it. it. We promised we would. Yeah, they beat the game. And they restarted. Jimmy called it pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they're playing Pokemon Crystal. Is that what they're doing? Okay. Yeah. And what did the numbers look like for Pokemon Crystal? Was it like a one hit wonder phenomenon or like people showing up at Trivs to play Crystal? I thought after they beat Red that would be it. I thought that was it. And I went and checked on it the other day, 80,000 people still. I was like, okay, this is still this is still a trend. Wow. <laughs> I thought yeah. after they beat it, they'd be like, okay, cool. Bucket list complete. Let's let's go play a real game now. <laughs> nope, they're still playing. And uh, yeah, they're up to Pokemon Crystal. So, I mean, right on. That's cool. It's still working. Yeah. I, it's still well, going. I think part of it's the community because there's like crazy uh, fan fiction and all these like uh, stories that they've created around like the original playthrough of Red. Really? Yes! Like, 
uh, Flareon was the false prophet, and Hypno's the jailkeeper, and all sorts of crazy stuff. It's actually really good stuff. It's really funny and interesting. <laughs> but it's just like, who came up with this stuff? Like, oh people my. are into it. It's... And there's some fantastic, like, fan art that people have made to go along with those stories. Hmm. I, yeah. I think that, I mean, you know, it's still pretty dumb. The whole concept of it's pretty dumb, but I, I'm actually... I I thought for sure there'd be only like a few thousand people in there playing uh, the next version, but man, no, it's going strong. Twitch must be like, oh god, we thought it'd be over, but now our servers are still loaded. I think no, this is as someone who's been streaming for a year, year and a half, two years now. I don't know how long it's been. I'm I'm thrilled to see that influx of new people coming and discovering the website. Because it's a very, very active, active community, Twitch. And uh, it's about time, you know. They've had a lot of people. I mean, they, they're no way <laughs> unknown. But it's about time that, like, Twitch breaks into the, you know, mass media in, yeah. in some way. Even if it's something as stupid as Twitch Plays Pokemon. So we've got, we've got two, you know, you got you got your YouTube, which is recorded videos. And then you got Twitch TV, which is your streams. You know, because they, they've had streaming for a long time. Ustream, yeah. you know, was a popular one back in the day. and Well, it wasn't real popular, but, I mean, it was for, you know, what they used it for, which ended up becoming uh, pirated movies. <laughs> well, that's, that's, yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Now that Twitch is really out there in the limelight, now we're going to start seeing, like, some lockdown on Twitch, I I imagine in the next six months you'll see them like really tighten in their belt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I I just yeah again I think it's awesome that uh, that Twitch is growing. So good for them. Good for you, Twitch. Congratulations. You beat <laughs> Pokemon. You did it. You, you did it. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, uh, let Dreadlow wanted to bring this up. And I think I, I, I don't know, the more <laughs> I think about it, I guess this is a pretty I, I don't know, it's relevant. But I'm I'm still indifferent. I, I guess I have more to say on it than I thought, but do you want do you let I'll let you I'll let you take this because now I'm still processing my thoughts. What the, the, the Minecraft trolling thing? Yeah. Yeah, that. Fill us <laughs> yeah. in. Well, I guess okay. Uh what is his name? As uh, Zexy Zek? I think Zeki his name Zek, is. I think. Wow. Zeki, Zeki, Zeki. What a name. Whatever his name is. Okay. Well, I guess uh, uh, Mojang had put out a new terms of service or terms and conditions or whatever when it came to Minecraft, and one of the things was had to do with uh, bullying and trolling uh, within, I guess, the gaming environment. And um, this Zeki Zek guy, he's been making YouTube videos that are surrounded around trolling. And so, for some reason, he felt as though this may hurt him. Don't know how, because they were talking about probably something else, but he took it as what he does in his videos. So, he went ahead and he had all of his followers, I guess, email Mojang about it, saying, how dare you, you know, you know stop this from happening or whatever. And so... It's I don't know I, I just I think that he made a big deal out of nothing, but uh, I guess Notch is going to re rehash it with his lawyers or whatever about the terms and conditions and change it for him so that he can do his trolling videos. Yeah, <laughs> I think if they change the terms of service, I mean, sucks for him that he can't do his videos anymore and may have to actually take them down. But boo hoo. Well, no, the thing is, is he, that's, that's just it. What they were talking about in the terms and to get to conditions have nothing to do with what he was doing in his videos. I mean, he didn't have to go to, you know, go to, you know, this measure to try and fix something that really is just, it was just a wording thing. I think he took it wrong, and he thought it had something to do with what he was doing, which, you know... Like well, if it's a know. bit ambiguous in, in in lawyer speak, then sometimes things can get tricky, uh, yeah. and he could have been swept under the rug. And I understand his fear, but at the same time, 
I I don't know if he puts ads or has a partnership or anything. I imagine oh, that yeah, he's he getting does. Yeah, paid by seven now. So, seven hundred like, thousand subscribers. <laughs> yeah, I, I I imagine with his following, I bet he is. But it's like boo hoo. Your job is to make videos playing games, and the game you've succeeded on most is now you're gonna have to do what everybody else does. Boo hoo. You didn't make the game. <laughs> Find something new or do what everybody else does. Cry me a river. Things change. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of on the same level. What I'm confused about is what in the world possessed him to even email uh, an inquiry about, about trolling in the first place because he was pr- basically asking for trouble. He sent someone at Mojang an email asking, hey, I make this trolling series. Is it allowed? And they just said no because he didn't specify what it was and it is not allowed. Because it, the uh, they just said trolling. They, they have I guarantee you their terms and conditions are the worst written pieces of crap ever. <laughs> They're probably the lamest. This seems to happen a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they, you know you don't put the word trolling in terms and conditions and then expect that to be specific because I wouldn't know what that means either. What yeah. they're trying to say is the game isn't used for bullying. Yeah. Do not use our product to bully other people, and you'll be fine. So when right. he writes them and says, well, I have a trolling series, and it specifically says no trolling, what else is a lawyer supposed to say? Uh, well, no, you're, you're not allowed to do that. Leave me alone. No, you're not allowed to do that, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So and instead of like trying to sort it out or or maybe look into it more, maybe even tweet Notch, he's very accessible. He's a very accessible guy. He makes a boohoo video, and his followers take it upon themselves, like Dreadlow said, to send hate mail. And... I think that's what bothers me the most. It bothers me that someone, even if they didn't intentionally, you know, it, or they didn't intend for their followers to turn on Mojang like that, what did you expect that was going to happen? Like, it sounds like right. this guy doesn't really know, uh, it doesn't really understand the internet as well as he should, having 700,000 <laughs> followers. Oh, no, he understands it perfectly. But think about it. He makes a trolling series. He feeds off of negativity. He likes to make people miserable. That's how he gets what he wants. That's all he knows. And so, like, that's what he does to get what he wants. He doesn't try, you know, like, just think about the mindset <laughs> so, okay. of that kind of person. Yeah, if he's... I, I When I heard trolling series, I assumed prank series. But you might be right. He might... He might want. He might have asked his followers to say, "Hey, go go tell Mojang what's up." I don't know. I didn't watch his boohoo video. I don't know who this, who this stupid guy is. But no, I wasn't I don't... gonna give him the time of day to watch yeah. that boohoo video. Exactly. <laughs> I I really you know Notch is a very stand up. He's a very stand up guy, and he even said in his in this open letter that he saw this hate mail and he decided to ignore it until it blew over. And then calm down because it, it upset him. He said that we're real people with real lives, and all these people sending us hate mail, it hurts. You know why? Didn't, you know why don't give us the benefit of the doubt here? So at no point did anyone say, "Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, trolling isn't what you think it is. You're just running a prank series here. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not using the game to hate on like people. right, right, exactly. Being, and that's yeah. what it was meant to be. <laughs> You're just being a dick. Not... You're not being a bully." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's a difference. Shame on everybody who sent them an ugly email. Yes, yes. I think if if this guy wants to uh, make it up to the community, he he should make another video saying, "Hey, we all owe Mojang an apology," because that was a cool thing of Notch to to just kind of say, "You should continue your series," but in our defense, you were kind of a dick. That's kind of that's <laughs> like if, yeah. if 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 it, if that uh, whole open letter is too long for you to read, that's basically what it says. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly, it was just it was unwarranted. I I think yeah, like you said, I think what he did was he contacted somebody in the legal department or something regarding this and uh, wasn't explaining what his videos were about. And instead of explaining, he said, "Yeah, well, I got a trolling series. Well, no, just no trolling." That's why I gave him the benef- benefit of the doubt because if he's going to take the time to email the legal department, that shows he's kind of concerned. So I'm, yeah. I'm assuming that he he's not all that bad. I still, again, I don't know who this guy is. But if he's going to take that time, I'm kind of thinking maybe he's not so bad. Maybe he didn't tell his followers, hey, go attack Mojang. 
But regardless, what did you expect? Even if you tell them to or not, they're going to do it. I don't think he probably told them to go attack, but he may have heavily suggested that we need to get in touch with Mojang and say, hey, this needs to change. And the problem is, is his community is kind of trolling and face. It's a more negative. I mean, it may be in good fun and in good spirits, but it's it's a negative thing. Yeah. And it's, it, 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 it attracts negative-minded people. So, of course, they're going to be a-holes about it because they're like, they're afraid one of their favorite series is going to go. Exactly, yeah. I mean, what if what if you made videos, uh, you know, killing bugs or something, and and uh, YouTube says, well, in our terms of service, you can't kill anything in a video and put it up there. You know, I mean, <laughs> oh, there goes my whole YouTube channel. I don't no. know what to do, man. My whole thing yeah, is about killing bugs. Yeah, you would freak out. Anybody would freak out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, there's, but I that's, mean, it goes the same way of doing stuff illegal on YouTube, you know. Yeah. And YouTube says, "No, you can't do that." I mean, it's, you got to. There's just if nothing you can do. Channel, just deal with it. Yeah, if your YouTube channel surrounds with illegal stuff, you know, and and they change the terms of service, saying they're going to take down videos that have this, maybe you need to change your YouTube channel, you know, and you, you come up with something new, you know. I don't know. Yeah, but. If you're that interested in in this guy, I guess, uh, and it'll be linked in the show notes, the story with the, you know, obviously the open letter and things like that. As if he is, doesn't have enough attention. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> giant publicity for this guy, but his name is Zeki Zach. And yeah. it's, you know, it, it, again, maybe he, he has a very harmless channel. I've never watched it. And I, I especially don't watch channels that I see this much hype around just because he, if he was doing this to get publicity, I don't want to give it to him. Well, yeah. I'm just mad because, like, whether he intended it or not, like, they his community was really rude and mean to Mojang, and that's not acceptable in my opinion. No, I maybe, agree. maybe in the maybe in the show notes you'll have Zeki Zek's YouTube channel, and then when they click the link, a big troll face will show up. Your your commander <laughs> of wild monkeys, <laughs> like, let's get it in control. Yeah, that's the same thing as. As having, you know, a Twitch chat with no rules and stuff, and all these jerks are in there. Yeah, then, I know. You know. I mean, you're just breeding bad behavior for for everyone else who's trying to have fun on the internet. It yeah. just sucks. So, I, I again, I what I don't like th is the popularity of channels that, that don't just troll, but they grief servers. Like, they, they have their whole videos about Oh, they got a whole, like, network. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I That's the kind of thing I can't stand is, like... Oh, look what we did. Look how many like people we've upset. No, I Good think for you. The, Just piss off. I think the reason why Mojang put this new terms and conditions out is a, for a very good reason because now they've they've opened the door for the Minecraft realms, which is basically a server that you can rent from them and it'll be on them. So if somebody goes in there and bullies somebody and a parent gets upset or whatever oh, and says, yeah. "Hey, so they're trying to cover their butts right now because they're making this Minecraft realm so now they got to get the rules just right so that they're covered. Because when it comes to private servers, who knows what goes on? I mean, I heard, you know, this, uh, this one... Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Bitburner, but uh, yeah. he, had, yeah. he has a whole website and he has a whole community surrounded around him and somebody decided to copy his logo and name and they had a, their own Minecraft server... And they had actual links in game to uh, pornographic material, and so that again, you know, that's something that Mojang has no control of. It's a private server, you know, there's nothing they can do. But with Minecraft Realms, see, they can they can now, you know, set some kind of terms and conditions that will protect them from somebody, you know, possibly going against them legally because of something that is in one of their servers. So that's why they probably did it. That's why they're making it. But this guy just, you know, flew off the handle for no reason. I th I think. Yeah, the the Minecraft Realms thing. I'm I could really care less about it. The prices of it are really good in comparison to big server hosts out there. The, right. the problem I have is, and maybe I just don't know enough. Maybe I haven't done enough research. But to me, it seems like it's literally renting a vanilla server. How much capability do I, how much control do I have? Well, the thing is, when they come up with the plug-in API, so you'll be able to put your plugins oh. on the Minecraft Realms, and also he already they've already put like four or five already put mini game maps 
that people have, the community has made, they have already in, uh, put that into the Minecraft realm. So you just click a button, change your map to a mini game, everybody gets on and they play the mini game. And then when you're done, you change it back to your world again by by the click of a button. So it's real simple, very easy, no big configuration bogus stuff that we have to go through on our yeah. private servers. And it's just very easy for kids or young adults or their their the moms and dads of kids to set up a server for their kids and pay the whatever oh. for it. And it's real easy. You don't have to, you know, you know, That's have good. some I, yeah, I'm not simple as good. I'm not dogging yeah. on realms. I, I think that it's a good idea for the, the Minecraft community in general. I think from a, a server admin standpoint, we've been running our community server for a couple of years now and having that amount of endless control is very very important when you're running a server where anything can happen anything anything goes and i yeah. i need to be able to get in there i mean not me personally i have i have my fantastic <laughs> Your team uh, yeah i have my fantastic team of helpers for that uh but we need to get in there to install certain plugins or certain things to make the game playable and make, you know, have everything protected and things like that. So maybe there's like a list. I I haven't started up Minecraft Realms, but I'm assuming there's some kind of list like of plugins you can enable that are like the most common ones maybe. Is that Yeah, uh, yeah, they've already got some he uh the his website basically states that we have everything you need to start this uh, start a, a realm on Minecraft Realms. Um we have all the, you know, um you know, any other additional plugins, like, say, like a questing plugin or, you know, just some extras, uh, mo creatures or whatever, those will be obviously features that you could probably add yourself with the click of a button eventually when they come out with a modding API. But uh, it has the, the basic features and admin control already built into it. So okay. you don't need you don't need to... Yeah, it's not vanilla vanilla. Otherwise, people would run a... Plus, it's only a limited amount of players. It's not like yeah, it's, uh, it's a private server. It's not server. made for for a public giant public server. It's just meant for no. like you and your friends. I think it's ten. I think is a oh. limit See, between ten and ten or twenty. I like hope that. is that it, ten people on the list or ten people at a time? Probably at a time. Uh, ten people at a time that can be on your server. So it's not for big servers. You know, it's for your friends. I you know what I hope in time it grows. I would prefer to give my money to Mojang rather than these server hosts, only because of the problems I've had with server hosts. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to name names or anything. There's some fantastic ones out there. Don't get me wrong, but the, some of the ones we've seen, uh, there's been in instances of really terrible customer service, and I don't know. It's kind of it's it's very competitive, but the prices all around are pretty expensive. I mean. We, in order for our servers to stay online, we need a good amount of people uh, actively donating and contributing to the community. Whereas the Mojang servers seem to be a lot cheaper because, you know, the, again, they're probably not for a lot of people. But in the future, I, I would love to have one that was just Mojang if I had the control required to. Yeah, I don't think that it. you'll have the control you have with a private server, though, as probably far as. Not. Plugins, configurations, no. and things like that, like we do now. But it's basic for for just the common player to have his friends on. Having a mini game server would be would be really fun, and and that would be a cool way to open one up. So, I and mean, I think that this whole advantages. yeah, but I think this whole idea with the Minecraft Realms is gonna like, hey, you know. Uh, we can we can make our servers the same way, you know. That maybe it'll come up. Maybe somebody will come up with a a way to. Again, we're waiting for the Minecraft uh, modding API. API. Yeah, the modding API because I think that's what's really holding everybody back right now. Oh so. man, I I hate hearing that term now because it just seems like something that's never going to happen. But it was supposed to happen. What Lord one point two? I think was reborn. <laughs> Modding API, API will come. I know it's gonna be here eventually. It just, it's been years now. They it they has. shouldn't have promised it in the first place if they knew it was gonna take this long. You don't get people excited for something like that because you're just welcoming hate mail. At it that point. better be better than Diablo three. <laughs> what? You know, we waited how many years for Diablo three, and it turned out to look. Be crap. It could be a scheming pile <laughs> of crap, and it'd probably still be better than Diablo three. I know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, what a weird 
What a weird comparison. I know. I was just thinking because we're waiting years for the mounting API, it better be good, you know? I think it's one of those situations where they're like, we can't just release this yet. We got to work on it. That That's what you would hope for. That's, again, benefit of the doubt. I think what's really going on, based on the updates I've seen, is priorities not being straightened out. That's what I kind of see. I see them doing all these random updates that were like, thanks, um, <laughs> modding API. You know, yeah. that's that's what I see. Maybe they're wanting to sort out like content and add it in because they're going to push realms and they want to kind of put, uh, make sure realms is set in place before they were like, mm, here's the modding API. Go wild. I See, <laughs> I still feel like the modding API should have been before realms and all these things. Because that's kind of the background. I mean, you want to yeah. get you want to get your your background set up before you start implementing all these new features. And obviously, realms would be ten times more efficient with the modding API. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. But from their standpoint, and from what I know about programming and stuff, I can see why they would want realms first. Because if you put the API in there, that opens the door for so many problems. And if it's just vanilla Minecraft, they can kind of see what's going wrong. And you know it's easier because you filtered out a lot of stuff. They can experiment with their modding. They can experiment exactly. with their modding API with realms. Oh, that's fair. Make sure everything works good. Yeah, that's fair. I'll have to look into realms. I'll have to. I want to know more about it now that I'm, you know, now I'm hearing that, you know, mini games and stuff like that. I've I've been thinking about uh, ways we can implement mini games on our community server for a while, and we've tried in the past, but it all comes down to the plugin developers updating their plugins. If they don't, we, we lose out on things for people to do on the server. So yeah. it would be kind of cool to have something that's just stable. Like, okay, here's our mini game server. Or, or doing just a one-time event. Okay, all this month, uh, you know, once a week, we're going to have a mini game thing going on, on on this Realm server. Something like that would be kind of fun. So I want to look into that. It would be kind of cool. Well, right now it's only in Sweden. But anyway. What, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, well, there's a 1.7.5 <laughs> update. I thought that would be uh, for everyone. Right, but but I, I think, um, or maybe it was. Maybe that this was it. Uh, I don't know. I, I just know that the, when they I first thought. came out with it, it was in, only in Sweden. Cause, yeah, or, if you, it's only in Sweden you can get the servers right now, I think. Possibly get then. Yeah, I, I guess. Because yeah, the 1.7.5 update on the screen doesn't say a whole lot. It just says, you know, uh, Realms implemented or something like that. So, I'll I'll look into it, but yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have all this information on the on the uh, website as always. I, real quick, uh, we'll mention it. We don't we didn't really have time to talk about it. We got to wrap up here in a minute, but uh, they're also they're also in talks of doing a Minecraft movie. Oh yeah, Warner Brothers. Yeah, their Mojang is is in talks with them on a Minecraft movie. I don't know how I feel about a Minecraft movie. It sounds really strange. But I heard Brad Pitt's is gonna be Steve. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Are they gonna do Herobrine? <laughs> yeah. Are you, that's the that's the only thing in Minecraft that I feel the like story would make of a an interesting interesting story. Like, I don't know how you would do a movie about a game that's just about building, but then again, they made the Lego Movie, so I don't. Yeah. Was... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I hope they'd come up with some kind of story behind uh, who Steve is and how he, you know. In my mind, this is what I imagined for the movie. Think Dungeons and Dragons. So, like, there's two storylines here. There's the storyline that's unfolding in the game of, kid, like, a group of kids who get on and play on a server. And then, like, what's going on in their real life. Somehow, the two meet up, and it's this beautiful parallel between the two worlds. I, oh no, that would be cool. You know where they actually get into the game. Yes. That's how I would do it. That's like how I would two, do it. Two sides of like inside and outside. Yeah, that is how I would go about it myself. But again, who freaking knows anymore? Uh, that that Lego movie. Every preview I've seen for that Lego movie looks like the most unfunny thing I've ever seen. But I haven't People heard are one. About it. I haven't heard one bad thing about that movie. Why? What every preview, a I've cult never out there. I've never seen a movie with <laughs> the previews Lego worse than the Lego movie before, and then heard all these positive things about it. I just yeah. it, it 
you know, I even like uh, looking at it from like a, a child standpoint. Like, okay, kids might laugh at that. I'm like, pop this, it doesn't even make sense. I, why would people? Why would anyone want to see this? And people love pop it. culture references. People love them. You can just chalk as much random crap into anything, and people will love it as long as they love the pop culture references. And Legos and for the perfect I feel format. Like that is what that is. Just a giant clusterfuck of pop culture references, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so they're like, that was awesome. And, like, nobody stops to think, oh, wait, that was a movie? Because it's also, like, made for youngers. Yeah. So, like, no one has a high bar for it anyway. But I've seen so many adults, like, oh, Lego movie. That's what I'm saying. Like, nobody walks in there with a high bar for it. True. I I guess. I I might have to – I'm going to rent that one. I'm not going to go to theaters to see the Lego movie, but – Anyway, we are we are out of time. Thank you guys for listening to episode sixty nine of the oh. Everything Noob Podcast. What? I just want to say one thing, real quick. <laughs> this is for Jem's sister, Rust. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke. Go ahead, end the show. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. <laughs> what the hell? Hijack the show for that? Oh my god! All right. Thank you for listening, Close everyone. One. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Everything New Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Everything New Podcast. Be sure to visit everythingnoob.com for previous episodes, show notes, host bios, and blogs. And while you're there, feel free to write us with any questions, comments, or suggestions you may have. Don't forget to check out the links to our Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch TV channel as well. On behalf of the noobs, see you next week, and happy gaming.